In the last video, we introduced a dynamic array and found that a key issue in implementing this data structure is coming up with an appropriate resizing scheme. We tried a couple of initial resizing schemes and found out that both of them performed n insertions in quadratic time. I ended the last video with a question about whether we could do any better, and in this video, I'll reveal the simple yet elegant scheme that modern programming languages use to implement these dynamic arrays. What's the core issue with the schemes that we have looked at so far? We know that the operation that's taking the most effort is a resizing. So a really good scheme is going to try to limit the number of resizes. Right now, when we refactor by adding a constant number of elements, at some point when our dynamic array gets really large and we continually add elements, we're going to be doing a lot of resizes where we're copying over a ton of elements. A better scheme would have to find a reasonable way to limit the number of resizes. So one idea that may come to mind is to scale our resize depending on the size of the current fixed array. What if we resize the array by a factor of 2 each time its capacity is reached? Let's see how the analysis of this plays out. When inserting 18 elements, we end up with a total of 46 insertions and 32 units of space. And if we continue this, we have 2020 insertions and 1024 units of space for 1000 elements. Notice that the insertions for the last few elements are just into an already allocated array. We didn't have to do any copying from a previous array to a new one. When we move to 1 million elements, we have about 2 million insertions and about 1 million units of space. So let's see if we can generalize this as before. In terms of space, our new algorithm is at most going to take 2n blocks of memory to insert n elements, which is O of n memory. Moving to insertions, what's a good estimate for how many insertions it will take for this resizing scheme to insert n elements? We once again first insert 4 elements. Then, after doubling the size of the array, we insert 8 elements, then 16 elements. And this continues until we insert the final n elements. We're going to assume n is a power of 2 to make the math nicer. We can slightly rearrange the sum to make it easier to work out. If it's not clear how to proceed, there's another cool geometric perspective that we can take to evaluate the sum. Let's take a look at this problem from the top down. At the end of this process, we know for sure that we're going to have to insert n elements into a final array of size n. Let's take a moment to visualize these insertions as a line of length n. The next line we add is of size n over 2. And then we add a line of size n over 4. And then n over 8. And so on. Perhaps, to your surprise, even if we continue to do this until we reach one element, we never quite match the size of the original line. So, one cool approximation to the sum is that our total number of insertions can never be more than 2n. If you are more mathematically inclined, you can get a similar result by simplifying the sum using the geometric sum formula, and this means that in the scheme, the total number of insertions for n elements takes O of n time, which is significantly better than our other O of n squared schemes. So, having gone through this for how long it takes to do n insertions into the array, take a moment to think about the following question. What's the runtime for a single insert operation using this scheme? This question actually ends up being intentionally ambiguous. There are really two ways to look at this. We just found a method to insert n elements in an array in O of n time. So one perspective to answer this question is that this means that on average, each insert operation is constant time, or in big O notation, O of one time. Computer scientists often like to call this the amortized runtime or average case runtime. 
Another way to think about this is in terms of the upper bound on how long a single insert operation takes. What's the worst case? Well, in the worst case, we end up inserting an element that requires a resize, which is going to require us to create an array that's twice the size of the current one and copy all the elements over. The runtime in this worst case is O of n. And both of these perspectives are completely valid. What you'll see in most data structures courses and books is that the running time of an insert operation in a dynamic array is O of 1 amortized and O of n in the worst case. So before I conclude, I do want to quickly mention a few other operations to take note of in a dynamic array. The insertion operations are only focused on the end of the array. If we wanted to insert an element in the middle of the array, we're going to have to shift all the elements over. This is to make sure that the indexing is consistent. Another important feature is removing elements, which really end up working exactly like insertions. We can remove elements from the end of the array in O of 1 amortized time and O of n worst case. The O of n comes from the fact that dynamic arrays don't want to waste too much space, so if after a series of remove operations, the array has less than half of its capacity, we resize the array by half of its size. And once again, if we remove an element in the middle of a dynamic array, this is going to take O of n time, since we're going to once again have to shift elements to the left to keep indexing consistent. So to finish things off, what we have just done is we found a way to create a dynamic array that has a fast insert and remove operation. We can also access elements super quickly. The key insight we found here was the resizing scheme. I'm hoping that the way we went through this gives you a sense that if you spent enough time with this and thought really deeply about it, you could have come up with these schemes and designed such a robust data structure. Really at the end of the day, it was a trial and error. As we go through more data structures in this series, I'm hoping we can continue to nurture this sense of exploration and discovery. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you took a moment to like the video and subscribe to get notified when future videos come out. If you would like to support this channel, check out the Patreon page linked in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.